Well, good evening, all. I wraps in with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening. As we're now looking at Monday, the 30th of September, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, uh, going into an awful lot of data. So before we get anywhere, why don't we take a look and see what we have tomorrow? You got the Red Book Group coming out at 755 with retail sales. You're going to get the final, the score here is final, is the word, September Manufacturing PMI, but then we get the ISM, September Manufacturing Sector Index. You're going to get construction spending data for August, and that comes out at 9. You're going to get the big report, the Jobs and Labor Turnover Survey. So when this comes out at 9 o'clock, the algorithms will take over the trading for a while. Markets will move rather dramatically. They often do because these are one of the numbers that the Fed takes a hard look at. Uh, last report, you had 7.673 million jobs being offered, a little more than one for every person looking for a work. The API Institute will release their weekly member stockpiles at 3.30. Now, I don't know if you were watching, but Fed Chair Powell spoke today, uh, a televised interview, asked a lot of questions, and he said he's not in a hurry. The Fed members are in no hurry to cut interest rates. His base case is 50 more cuts this year of 2024, so a 25 and a 25. However, that can change depending on the data because the members are gonna stay data dependent and they are very focused on the labor market. So you got the JOLTS report, you got ADP, and you got the US jobs report this week. That's a lot of data for jobs. Israel. It looks as though they've begun the invasion into Lebanon. The bombs are going off. It's all over the news. So keep your eye on that. The Lebanese government's looking for solutions, and they did pull their army back. So ideally, Israel's in fighting with uh, the Lebanese army. Now, whether they'll fight with Hezbollah, I don't know. They are two different factions within Lebanon. The U.S. port strike is set to begin at 12.01 a.m. Eastern time. But magically at the last minute, the alliance is offering a 50% increase in wages over six years. They're offering better health care solutions, and they're willing to triple the employer contribution to retirement plans. There's probably more in here that we don't have all the details of. It certainly looks on the surface. I'm not part of what's being asked for by the unions but it certainly seems on the surface that they've come to the table with a big package. Is it big enough is what we don't know. So we'll look to see how that's all gonna play out. Wanna remind you that our silver report for SIL, SLV, and silver itself is on the website at irapstein.com on the top left. All you need to do is look at, uh, look at it and you'll see the big button there. It says silver report, give it a click. You can also move your cursor during any time during the video to catch it, okay? So let's go to the chart action and see what we've got. Let me bring you back right over here. That's where I want to be. All righty. So the market's finished in the green. Now, they broke fairly hard today. I mean, if you were looking, you got down to 482 in the QQQ. It came back to 488. Just take a look. They all had some pretty interesting moves. Uh, tonight, you're down a little bit in the futures markets. We'll see if that carries over or not as to where the market's at. But for the month of September, the adage that you will have one of the worst months of the year, if this was what you call one of the worst months, I'll take it every time. This was no big bad month in any way, shape, or form. Yes, you had inter-month inter breaks, so what? By the end of the month, you were in pretty good shape. You're seeing what's happening here in the auto stocks. Auto stocks are in trouble. They've got to figure out some solution as to how they get their prices down. You know, their, their rival out there, China, is just too strong in this game. Uh, when we take a look at Boeing, they didn't do anything over the weekend to help their stock at all. When we take a look at NVIDIA, it came back and it is up four cents on the day. ARC is just sort of treading water here. Tesla was up another dollar. Seems in the low 260s, it's run into a bit of a problem. You're coming back down, as you'll see in Amazon, to some key numbers. So let's go to the charts. 
What we started looking at over the weekend was wind resorts. And the reason is China has pulled out the bazookas. They're trying to get the consumer to spend. Today they announced, you started off the day with an order from the uh, People's Bank of China, that mortgages by October 31st must be lowered the equivalent, existing mortgages of 50 basis points. Number two, if people want to go to Shanghai, some, two other big cities are their biggest, they can do so and buy homes there without a permit. Now, in the past, non-locals had to receive a permit. It was a lot of red tape. You couldn't do it. They're trying to move product. There's not going to be new product built for a long time. You'll finish up what's on there, and that's the same as doing infrastructure. But Everything at some point pulls back, and now we have a Chinese holiday coming forward. So the Chinese stock market today was up dramatically, but keep your eye on it because as holidays approach, people do things, and there's that fear of missing out, uh, especially during a holiday period. Market has soared, as you can see. You've gone basically from the 80 level, and you've soared up to about 96 overall. I mean, that's a pretty big move in no time at all. The reason is Macau, hoping to get business back there, and wind does well in foreign countries, Abu Dhabi, they're opening up in different areas. Uh, what I don't like on the chart is it's neat that this happened, but a real bull market will have the shortest term average over at least one of these. You're not at that point yet. When we take a look at Bollinger Bands, we've just gone bonkers over them. When you pull back, you're going to pull back to the right-hand side shortly. When it does, it does. And we'll take another look at it. This is certainly, from my perspective as a chartist, not a place you go in and buy over the Bollinger Bands. And I guess that's why I'm covering it now. This is not the place. On pullbacks, yes, but I wouldn't tell you to do it there. Rivian still remains in its bear mode. Now, I was looking, as you know, for 12 and a half to $11 for it to get back to. I've hit all my targets. So now it's a question of when you lose. Did you hear the word lose, the embedded reading? Embedded means the two numbers that make up the slow stochastic, the K and the D line, are both going sideways underneath 20 for more than three days. Until the red line closes over 21, there should be selling pressure on the market. When that happens, it's like, and the market generally gives you a nice little bounce. In CrowdStrike, I have been adamant that I thought this was an area of a top. I think you can pull back to the 18-day average, and I have not changed my opinion on that. In Uranium, I pointed out that this neat rally that you had off the Three Mile Island, and today there was an announcement uh, of another reactor that got a billion and a half dollars, uh, the Hartley Group, to start it up, and that's great. But it will take over a year to do so, and you're in a resistance. Don't be surprised if you lose the red line under 79 that you make a further break in the market. Now the question is, does it hang at this area or a little bit lower? The market is bullish, it's out of its bear trend, but it's in a big resistance area. Dell, just like CrowdStrike, got up in my opinion too high, and when it got up here on, uh, this was I believe Thursday, I said watch out, the pros are probably going to be coming out of the market there, doesn't look too wrong. Those are just the natural resistance areas, they're not spots to go short, they're spots where money should be coming off the table. You can see what you've got here in Toll Brothers. I've dropped Lennar for a reason. Let me, let me explain it. I'm convinced in this type of market, Lennar gets hurt because it's got to buy down mortgages. The profile of a Toll Brothers buyer doesn't need that. They're basically deep pockets. They're buying luxury homes. The margins are stronger. So why not play the margin guy? Eventually, we'll want to move back to the Lennars, but I think it's wrong right now. So I swung back on the gears. It's embedded. I think the market is still a buy on breaks until the red line closes back under 79. And this is a market that would still participate if we see the JOLTS report, the ADP this week, and the U.S. jobs report come in weak in, in, in insinuating that the Fed should go more than their 25 and 25 basis point cut. Everything would jump on that. 
the home builders, if you're going to play it, why pick one stock? You might be better with this. It also has the embedded reading. So until the red line closes under 79, it's finding buyers in it. In XLF, I'm not that in, in love as others are with the financial services right here. I, I think the market's got the swing line down, the bias up, sideways market. Seems to me that it had its little move and it's just sort of sitting right now. The market that just confuses me is the industrial sector, and that's because each time we go to a region of the Fed, uh, the Chicago PMI came out today, example. None of them are strong, and yet this market just keeps going. The market's telling you it wants to be bullish. It's on the come that in industry's going to pick up with low rates, and you still have an embedded reading. On the energy sector, well, just like we were talking the other chart that went up and ran into all that resistance at these two averages, that's what it is. And the first time you hit a 200-day average, that's almost a one-year average. A six-month average is the 100. I, well, it's not quite six months. It would be, what, four months? Four months. So that's, to me, a lot. I, I don't want you to uh, fight that. In gold, I want this market to pull back. I want to see this lost. If you remember my report on gold, we came up and I said, look for a swift break when it comes back to the 18-day average. And historically, that's about all it has before it moves back up if it follows the past history into the year-end trade. We'll see if that materializes. Similar story in silver? Get my silver report. I'm not going to answer that. In the copper market, pulling back. The market has still got an embedded reading. This is the Chinese play. That's why this has gone up like that. But as I said over the weekend, and I'll say again, it's wonderful what China's doing. Uh, President Xi has changed gears. He realizes there's a problem finally. That is the great news, and the Politburo is behind them, and this is great news. But you're not getting the orders in for copper. What you're getting right now is the psychology that it'll do better. In BND, the battleground's right here at the 18-day average. I'm flip-flopping back and forth, by the way, intentionally between TLT and BND. Now, the key is to take out Friday's high and close strong on the day. If that happens, then I think you can go back to the upper Bollinger Band. The dollar keeps coming up to the 18-day average, void of a trend. You have a higher high, lower low. It's a difficult market. Actually, got a higher high, lower high. Let me say that right. I said it wrong. You've got higher lows, but you're starting to break down from them. So you got to be careful with what you've got. And it's the flip-flop here. Lower highs, trying to make lower lows, which it's doing. Overbought could be coming back into the 10262 area to try to find what it's going to do next. With that I'm I Rapstein, remember the silver report, move your cursor up there or go to irapstein.com. I'll see you in the morning.